The year is 2014. RED is about to release the most technically advanced cinema camera to date. A camera the industry was not prepared for. Now, fast forward nearly a decade, a camera that has all but been forgotten may be the best budget cinema camera available. Let's dive in. Now this is the Red Dragon. This body is going to start at about $35,000, which is a lot, but then again you have to consider what you get. But as you can see at the Red booth, the buzz is palpable because people realize they are at the cusp of making a new generation of content in 4K. They're also talking about their big push into high definition stills along with the motion all in one single unit. Now, if you want to shoot in high def, you definitely want to check out Red. Hey everybody, welcome back to what I hope is another fun video where we talk about a camera that hasn't been talked about for a while. And it's one of my all-time favorite cameras. And it's just crazy that it doesn't get shot on anymore. And that is uh, not this Red Raptor here, but two generations past of the Red market, which is the 6K Red Epic Dragon. Dragon specifically, and that is the important part. All right, so what makes the Epic Dragon worthy of doing a video about? Well, let me tell you. At one point, this camera was very, very expensive. I think the Epic Dragon body uh, and sensor package was like roughly around $60,000. And it was a great camera that shot a ton of stuff. Uh, what was it? House of Cards, S Stranger Things, uh, version of this shot, Maniac on Netflix all kinds of really big budget stuff was being shot on Dragon specifically because it could shoot 6K when not much else on the market could. And the nice thing about the Dragon sensor is that it was almost full frame. So it's a 1.17 crop of full frame when you're shooting in full format 6K on this camera. Now, when I first got this camera many years back, not many full frame lenses were out. So oftentimes you'd be shooting in 5K, 4.5K to get your Super 35 lenses to cover this sensor. Fast forward a few years later, there's a plethora of full frame lenses out today that can take advantage of the full sensor area of this Epic Dragon. Now, if you are just getting into cinematography, let's say you're moving up from a mirrorless and you don't know what to buy, I really think you should give a good look at the Epic Dragon because now the prices for a full package are hovering in the two to 4,000 range and this camera packs infinitely more for that price than anything else you'll find on the market in that realm. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about what the camera offers, see some footage, talk about some ways to use it, and hopefully maybe make your decision on going to find a used Epic Dragon package. So let's get into it. All right, let's talk about some specs on this camera. So as I said, it's a 1.17 crop of full frame in 6K. And at 6K, you shoot up to 100 frames a second in widescreen format uh, in here. The nice thing about this camera is uh, one, it didn't weigh a ton from the factory as I think a four pound body and you can add stuff to it. It's very modular for what's out there. Modules are available, touch screen, uh, EF, PL swappable, OLPFs inside. Uh, also, there's several variations from Kipper Tie, Red Directly, where you can change your image in camera. All the stuff we're shooting today that you're gonna see is my favorite version of the OLPF, which is the skin tone highlight version of Kipper Tie's Carbon 2, which in my opinion has a really nice soft roll off, uh, blooms highlights very similar to the Alexa. Um, it's just something that I always rolled with when I shot this camera a lot. And the big thing with this camera is Dragon Sensor. So there was MX, then Red moved to Dragon, and the Dragon Sensor, in my opinion, was the holy grail uh, of red sensors to date. I feel like the skin tones, the highlights, as long as you were within the bounds of how you shot it, 
just looked so, so good. And still to this date, haven't seen one that looks as good out of camera. Now with any red sensor, it all shoots raw. So you can do a lot in post to get those skin tones exactly where you want them. But the Dragon 6K, red raw, 16-bit internal. It is a fantastic codec. And if you haven't shot on red before, it is really, really stunning what you can do and the latitude you have in post with that sensor. So it shot on these little mags, which I guess are not little in comparison to let's say an SD card or a CF Express Type B. These came in 128 or 256. They might even have made a larger one in this size, but these things have never failed me. I've put thousands of hours on this camera and I've never had an issue with any media uh, for this system. Now, Red did update the Dragon and went into DSMC2, which was a different uh, version of this body style. And from there is when I started moving away from Red and my problems were that they open it up to many manufacturers to make modules and things of that nature. And it just never had the reliability that this camera had. There was a touch screen for this where you control a lot of stuff from the camera. Um, there was a side handle that you could put batteries in to run around and be very uh, run and gun with it. And when this came out, battery technology a few years back was still very chunky, big batteries. Now with like Core's version of the Nano Micro V-mounts, you can really get just a tiny little battery on the back of this and run for a while and still shoot, you know, full 6K, slow-mo, whatever you want. And be very, very nimble and light, which is awesome. Another really great thing about RED being that this is uh, raw, is you can go back now and use this same exact uh, color science and all the new improvements from RED's raw pipeline into this. So you can adjust your highlight roll off, your contrast curves all in camera with this footage and you don't have to be on a Komodo or a Raptor, which is really great to have backwards compatibility with the codec with all the current stuff that's happening with their post-production uh, software on Red Cine X. So that part is really great also. Now when Red made the DSMC system, starting with the Dragon, DSMC stood for Digital Stills Motion Camera. Really great thing about Red's codec is you can use this as a stills camera. We shot a little test footage in here, um, set up a little seamless backdrop and just shot some movement and stills that instead of snapping off a few, taking them here and there, getting your poses, you can just run consistent video, go back and post, find that exact frame you like and export a full high res, crazy amount of detail TIFF that then you can go in and edit as you need. But it's really great being able to, if you're on set and you're wanting, somebody wants stills, it's like for any amount of video you shoot, theoretically you could pull a still that they could use for let's say uh, magazine, print, even if somebody wants to make a billboard campaign out of what you shot for video, it's all very possible with the red raw codec and how much detail is in this sensor, which is really, really great. Also, Red had this really cool feature called HDRX, which, you know, wasn't the best for motion, but it would take alternating images and based on varying shutter speeds on those, you could get more dynamic range from your image. So if you were doing a heavy motion scene action, didn't really work well because you could always tell the difference in the alternating frame on the shutter speed. But here's something I get asked to do a lot. Hey, I want to shoot this interview. I'd love to put this person right in front of this window and we want to see everything that's outside on this bright sunny day. Well, for things like that with an interview, where there's not a lot of movement. HRX can be really beneficial. You know, it'll take more data, but Instead of having more lights and a bigger setup, you can still be light and nimble and get a, a lot more dynamic range out of your scene. Uh, same thing if you're shooting real estate or some other stuff. Uh, HRX has its purpose and it does work when you wanna use it, which is really, really handy in a handful of situations. Okay, well you've heard me clamor on about this camera and like really who cares, but why I'm making this video and why this is exciting is these cameras being so cheap now, two to $4,000 for a full shootable kit, now is really interesting. When these came out, 60 grand. Now, two to four. That is absolutely insane. And you look at other cameras on the market in that realm, right? Uh, a Pocket 6K Pro, uh, 
something like a C200 maybe, or um, maybe an Ursa Mini Pro. All good cameras and all do fun things, but they are not nearly as production ready for all productions as the Epic Dragon was in terms of firmware capability, what it can do inside, anamorphic functions, the power of its codec, uh, just so much stuff that these other systems just will never be able to offer. And it was a fully fleshed out system, so if you wanna find stuff for it, there's a lot out right now uh, over the years that you can add onto this camera and find for dirt cheap. So, here's the thing I'm proposing. Let's say you got $10,000 and you're like, I wanna get a Komodo. It's my first step into a red. Or I wanna get a, let's say an FX6 or something along those lines. Maybe even a C300 Mark III. 10 grand. Most of that is gonna go just straight to your camera package. And with a Komodo, that'll max out very fast. The nice part about this is you can still take all the advantage of the RED ecosystem, but when you spend $3,000 for a kit, that gives you $7,000 left over to buy a great tripod, buy a wireless unit like a Teradek, maybe buy a wireless follow focus, um, buy an on-camera monitor. All of those things you are gonna use on every shoot and be able to bill your client for regardless of what camera you're shooting on. Red's not for every job, we all know that, no camera is. So, if you're renting an Alexa, if you're renting a Komodo, you're renting a C500 Mark II, all the accessories you buy with your camera package, you can always rent to production, constantly be making your money back. So there's no need to tap your bank out to buy just a camera when you can get something that is very, very, very capable, much more so than a lot of things on the market, even still being six years old, maybe more than that, seven, eight years old, and have accessories that are going to maximize how much you make as a shooter on every job you're on, because let's be honest, if you're not charging for your stuff, you should be, because that's how it works. We're all in this together, right? So let's uh, make sure we're doing that. Dragon's a great camera, but no camera comes without its downsides, and I feel like this is the point in the video, after we've highlighted everything great about it, to start talking about a few of the negatives. Negatives, fairly short to be honest, but biggest one like most of the reds out, no built-in ND, so factor that in. But that being said, with the money you save buying a cheap package, you go buy yourself a set of great NDs and you can use them for the rest of your life and take them out on every shoot. Another downside, it is an end of life camera. So red is no longer offer support for it. So if something happens, there's a chance you will no longer have a camera. But that being said, in the grand scheme of camera maintenance, if you had to buy another one of these for the same price, $2,500, that is almost the same price as just having, let's say, a, a sensor recalibration at Aerie or something very minor anywhere else. So grand scheme of things, it's actually maybe not a downside, but have to keep that in mind. The other thing, the fan, the mythical fan that makes all sound people hate red. The fan, if you are not used to this, it's what keeps this camera cool, and sometimes it gets loud. The camera has lots of settings and ways you can configure your fan setup, so if you start really getting into it, you're never really gonna be in a position where that happens, but if at first you get this and you're looking at it, it is something that will have to be actively managed all the time, just, you know, I mean, not so much if you're shooting B-roll or stuff without sound, but if you have a sound person on set, you definitely want to be nice to them because one day they'll be nice to you uh, and we like to work together. So making sure that that is all copesthetic in camera only is gonna help everybody out, make your day go smoother. Only other real drawback with this camera, uh, maybe there's a couple. Rolling shutter from this era of cameras was good but not fantastic. So in full 6K mode, you are gonna notice maybe more rolling shutter than something that's like full frame today, like a C500 Mark II or an FX9 uh, Mini LF. You're definitely gonna see a little bit more rolling shutter, but you know, when are you just like woo, 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 panning all over the place. So most general stuff, not gonna find it. Uh, another downside to this camera is the low light capability. And it's not something that is necessarily a downside as you just need to be aware. 
800 is what they claim roughly native ISO, even split on your latitude. But pushing Dragon to 1600 may not get you the best results unless you have a lot of light to feed the sensor and you kind of want to expose to the right. Now, RED did make something for this camera, which was great. It was called the Low Light Optimized OLPF. And this was kind of a solution to that. So if you do know that you're gonna be running into some more low light situations, so the Low Light OLPF you can swap out. Now you're gonna get uh, your sensitivity shifted slightly. And now you can probably, with what noise reduction is available in post now in Resolve, 3200 is about kind of a safe place where just a mild amount of noise reduction will get you a pretty decent image. Um, I've taken it up to 6400, I believe, in the past and had to do some heavy cleanup, but this was years ago before it's really great noise reduction systems. So anymore, it's actually pretty great to be able to have that option to either prioritize highlight and skin tone or prioritize uh, low light capabilities. So that's really fun. All right, I'm abruptly going to end this video. Red Epic Dragon, it's awesome. Go shoot on it. It'll be worth the money. And that's it. Thanks for watching.